live streaming, live shows, especially with multiple cameras and multiple people, not an easy task. But I'm gonna show you that something that makes it insanely easy to cut a show, not make mistakes, and keep things organized according to your content. Our friends at Qs, they make this stuff simple. And a big thanks for them for making this video possible. I wanted to see if I could make Nightlight, a remote podcast that I produced a few years ago, to be fully automated by Qs Automator. And the results really surprised me. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up vMix, get Automator to do just about everything you need to do right from the rundown. First thing we're gonna do is we need to pair Automator with our rundown and our computer. So I'm running vMix locally on this machine. You get two available Automator connections. We wanna click pair with project. I'm gonna click the copy key button. We've launched Automator. We click open GUI and this screen appears. I'm gonna just drop the pairing code in here. I'm gonna paste it. Now we're ready to go. We can see our Nightlight project right here. And if I click on it, that's gonna give me the automation view. First thing we need to do is add devices. And that can be done up here in the device menu. And it's really simple. I've got a couple of devices already configured. My local vMix, which you just saw. Uh, my camera, which is the camera you're looking at right now. But adding a device is pretty simple. You just click on device and tell it what type. Now, Qs is, Automator is pretty uh, powerful. It supports a lot of different devices. We want to control vMix. I give it a name, a friendly name. Type the host name, which in my case is localhost. The next thing, and this is one of the most powerful features of the Automator, in my opinion, is called the Downloader. I would use Automator just for this feature alone. Even if I was cutting a show manually or doing anything else, just to have all the media handled for me and downloaded in the background is a massive time saver. And organized by the rundown. If things change, the media moves around for you. So what this does, you check handled media, and this is gonna download the media files to a local drive, to the local drive of your device or wherever you specify in the background. As the rundown loads, these green checkboxes will appear which means the media is ready to play. And it's gonna do, do that in the background. If somebody loads media while the show's going on later on, it's gonna do that in the background for you too and load it by the time you get to that part of the show, hopefully the media is ready and it, it should be. It downloads pretty quickly. So you just set a download folder and this is the folder that on the automator machine that you want to download to. And then device media folder, what that is, so this is, the, this is on the Automator machine because Automator is doing the download to itself, to, to a local device. And then the device media folder would be the path that vMix should look for the media. Now, each of these blocks that has media associated has a field called media. And that's saying, okay, for the clip block, I wanna download the file that's referenced in the media field. You can have multiple fields and you can have multiple media per field, per block. So this lets you map which file should be downloaded. Now let's talk about how you're actually gonna run the show. You can set up a show to do everything, absolutely everything automatically. Um, this will work for very scripted shows like news. Podcasts are gonna be a little bit different because you're gonna have these blocks of unscripted material where you're gonna have to hot punch cameras manually to follow the conversation. So you're really gonna have to decide what is the best approach for your show. Is it fully automated? Is it somewhat automated? Maybe you're just handling media. If it's a highlight type show, maybe sports highlights, you're probably just gonna to wanna to handle media because the show is blocked and formatted, but all the host banter and everything is un usually unscripted. So you're gonna to wanna to cut cameras manually. It's up to you, but the beauty is Automator lets you do all of that and set up a show in any way. For our, our nightlight show, we're going to automate the media handling. We're gonna automate the transitions and graphics, um, but the camera cutting is largely gonna be manual. Let's take a look at our nightlight show and how I plan to run it. I've kept it as simple as possible. I have four camera sources here. Cam one, two, three, four. Then I have two playback lists, list A, list B. Now this is where the automator magic happens. It's basically mimics, mimics a two channel playout server in a broadcast control room. So I can go back to back, not have any glitches or anything like that. Automator will take care of alternating this for you. And I'll show you how to set that up in just a minute. Then I'm gonna have an input for each of my box effects. 
in my case, I'm doing graphics through GT title in vMix. So I have each GT title template in here as an input. And speaking of that, I have here CG1 and CG2. These are my Casper CG outputs, uh, which I am also controlling to do some of the pre-rendered graphics that we have built for the show. That is my vMix setup. Let's jump into the rundown and I'm gonna show you how you can start to configure the blocks. I'm gonna to go to configure block and this is where Automator can really tie into your rundown when you configure these fields properly. So the field name, title, that's just the title of the block of the segment. Media, well, this is a clip and this is the open of the show. So the media is gonna be the media field that we want to play back, the clip that we actually wanna play back. A sound field, a sound tag called the label field, which is a multiple choice. If the sound shouldn't air, if it's slow-mo or something that you can't air, I want it to be off, or SOT, sound on tape, which means full sound. So that basically tells me what to do with the sound because we can't forget about sound. Every automation block has a diff couple of different phases. On cue, steps, time code, next, and blur is after it's done. You can configure a whole bunch of global variables that can be used throughout your automations. Um, it's gonna be pretty specific to everybody's workflows. But the alternators are pretty universal. So I've created a DDR alternator or that's gonna alternate between list A and list B, which are the names of my playback channels. The first thing I'm gonna do when this pops up on cue, I'm gonna tell the system to update or toggle a DDR variable. So it automatically switches to the one that's not being used. Then I'm gonna remove everything from the vMix list. I'm gonna add my clip to the alternator right here, variable DDR. I'm going to turn on autoplay because as soon as we take it to air, I want it to start playing. And then I'm just going to hot punch, cut direct that input to vMix. Um, so that's always going to happen because that's the video. Now I handle the audio. Remember those uh, fields over here that I created called SOT, VO, and OFF? That's where the magic of Automator comes in. So I'm going to check that field right here. If clip.sound which is referring to this, is off. I'm going to turn the audio off. And um, this tells vMix just to turn the auto fade off so that it will not turn on an, or unmute the audio when it goes on air. If it's sound on tape, I want to tell it to turn the auto fade on and then set the volume to my audio level, which I've set to 80% in this variable here. And then I'm going to have it turn off all the host mics. And I've created a macro to do that. If the sound is voiceover, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm not going to turn off the host mics and I'm going to set this audio level to the level I want for voiceover, um, which is about 50%. So you can do pretty powerful stuff with these fields and with automator logic like this. Now I'm going to show you how I automatically dissolve to the next block in the rundown when we hit the end of the clip. That's where the time code comes in. The time code watches time code source, it watches the variable DDR, it watches the, the list playback, the length. It knows how long the clip is because vMix knows how long the clip is. And I want to tell it here, 550 milliseconds from the end, I'm telling the program ME to fade to whatever's in preview. And then after it's done, I'm going to advance the automator block to the next item. So you're going to say, well, Mike, um, you're transitioning to preview. Well, how do you know what's coming up in preview and that it's correct? Well, that's where you have to have a good philosophy on how to automate this show. So my on cameras, I'm gonna show you exactly that. The live block I've configured to always have a automation run when it's the next block. I have two fields, camera number, and then camera preset, which is a preset number for my PTZ camera. What I do here is I'm going to update my camera num variable to whatever camera's in my live block, the preset to whatever preset is in this live block from here and then I will recall those presets. And then remember, this is all happening before this block even hits air. Then I always want to put it into vMix preview so it's ready to go. Now that brings us to graphics. As soon as my host is on the screen, I wanna show a, a lower third graphic with their names. So in here, in this my two line lower third, you go to configure block and it's a two line, so it has a title and a subtitle. And GT title is actually going to use these two fields to populate the template and put it on air. 
So whatever I put here in this top line on my block is going to be the first line of my graphic. Whatever I put here in the subtitle is going to be the second line. So on cue, when this block hits air, what I want it to do is set the text of this template to the main line text field in my graphic template. And I want it to pull the data from my block, the two line third, third dot title, which is first name, last name. And I'm going to do the same thing for line two. This is called a step automation. And what it does is just toggles the overlay and put one out on vMix. So if I hit that button, my graphic is going to animate out and the rundown will stay on this block until I'm ready to move to the next one. My two box. I have this set up and what I've actually done is created two fields in here. Left box, right box. And those are the camera names that should appear in those boxes. We're going to run this stinger transition and we want our two box to automatically show up with the correct cameras right after this transition. I'm going to start with the next variable. So I want to preview the input. Um, I want to turn the loop on for the artwork. Now here's where the magic comes in. I want to set the layer based on the camera fields from here. Now if you're familiar with vMix, every input like this has layers. It's like an ME on a traditional switcher. I have layer one and layer two control these cameras. So I'm going to tell it to set the layer in that effect in vMix to the left box camera and I'm going to tell it to set the other layer to the right box camera. To create these dynamic buttons I tell it the name of this button should be the two box left camera name which comes from here camera one. When I click this button I want vMix to hot cut that camera to air. Same thing with the right box and then the two box just puts the two box composite back to air. So your automator steps will update there based on whatever the producer puts in the rundown. It just follows your content. What does all this automation do for us? You don't have to spend hours setting up, making sure you have all your media and going through all these things. Automator takes care of all of that. If you liked all this automation, if you wanna try setting this up for yourself, check out the link below. Go get a trial of Qs and Automator. See what it can do for your production. I think it's fantastic.